Hi, I'm Kavya. And I'm Lucy, and we're here interviewing James Bartlett. Um, firstly, educationally, what path did you take to be where you are today? Mm, I took a very roundabout path to get here. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, definitely not in high school and not really even in, in college. So um, I kind of gravitated towards the arts very broadly. So my undergraduate degree is in English, English literature. Uh, and then I got a master's degree in publishing uh, from NYU. Really thought that I wanted to uh, be in magazine publishing. And um, so learned all about that, but then realized uh, my interest in the arts was much broader. So I kind of took what I learned about um, media and publishing and started applying that knowledge across a lot of different arts fields um, and working with a lot of different arts organizations from theaters to literary and poetry organizations uh, to museums and visual arts uh, institutions. So um, yeah, the majority of my uh, visual arts specific education has been in the field and in real life. So um, as a curator, what factors do you consider to sort of convey a certain theme and create a conversation around the works? So I always think about um, the visitor, the viewer. Um, to me, an exhibition is a conversation between the artist and or artists and, um, and the visitors. I think that's what makes it an exhibition as opposed to, you know, um, artwork on display. And so... I think about um, associations um, between the works, like what, what works are in conversation with one another. So when uh, a, a viewer views a, a set of works, you know, um, what are common themes and common uh, feelings, emotions that they, they might have. Um, and overall, um, trying to connect it with broader um, social and cultural uh, themes and, and, uh, and contemporary issues. To me, I think providing as many entry points as possible to an exhibition is important, you know, because we all you know, we engage differently, we learn differently. Some people like to read, some people like to listen, some people like to look, and some people like to do all, you know, all, all of the above. Some people like to touch, <laughs> not that that's in every exhibition. Um, but really keeping the, the senses um, in mind. And then I'd say, um, additionally, just thinking about um, the exhibition as a whole. You know, I think that's one of the biggest roles of a curator is to um, take a set of artworks, whether they be by a lot of different artists or by a single artist, and make them feel like one cohesive body that um, uh, it's almost in some ways kind of like, to me kind of like a book, you know, it has to make sense chapter after chapter as you proceed through the exhibition. Um, so what drew you specifically to Ming Smith's work? Ah, that's a great question. I um, have always um, been a huge admirer of the way that she uses light and motion um, and the way that she captures a portrait. To me, uh, everything she does is a portrait, whether it's of a person or a figure, because it's, it's capturing the, the humanity in the subject, uh, even when there isn't an actual human in it. Um, when she's capturing a, a landscape, um, you feel the, like, the life and the humanity in it. Um, uh, sometimes through the form of figures, other times through um, the feeling of, of being in the space. Like as opposed to being a, a viewer of a picture, it, it puts you in that, um, that setting. Um, so yeah, she's a, a, a master of her craft and also an innovator in um, you know, how she uses the medium of, of photography, um, whether it's Again, through the motion she captures in it, or uh, color, paint, 
uh, alteration, blending of multiple exposures. So she'll take multiple images and fuse them into one that still feels very cohesive. So Feeling to the Future, which is the title of the exhibition, contains Ming Smith's work ranging from the 70s to today. Um, and in an interview, she once says that as a photographer, she aims to capture the past in order to shape the future. Uh, as the curator, what was your role in sort of conveying this idea? Yeah, so it's always, so I mentioned I've known Ming for a few years now, and, and this feels like the culmination of uh, a long conversation that we've been having. Um, and it's interesting that um, I've actually haven't heard that quote exactly. And the, the, the title um, actually came up with the, the title of the exhibition a few years ago, not directly referencing that that's exactly, you know, how she, she looks at it. But to me, there's, I, I've, I've just always felt this, um, um, I, I, time feels amorphous in her works. And so um, for me, feeling the future uh, is about the connectivity of time. So it's not necessarily like futuristic, although it could be, could be that as well. Um, but it's, it's the sense that um, of, of a oneness of time in, in that regardless of when, uh, you know, in linear time an image was captured, um, the, the, the feeling that is captured is timeless. And, you know, you can walk through the exhibition and you know, I can guarantee that without, without labels, no one will be able to, you know, <laughs> specifically say, you know, what, what, what date or what era something was taken in because I think, again, going back to how she captures um, humanness and humanity in, in a piece, it's, it's, um, that's what is the, uh, ultimately what comes through you know, not like a particular snapshot in time. Um, so many of Ming Smith's works center on black musicians like Flamingo Fandango and David Murray in the Wings. In the exhibition, two pieces will feature sound. So how does music contribute to an understanding of the exhibition? Yeah, that's a great question. So Ming's work, while um, predominantly has been uh, photography, it uh, it is a blend of multiple mediums. So uh, to me, Ming just Ming uses the camera to convey and be in conversation with other art forms. Uh, music and, and jazz in particular is um, often uh, a source of uh, uh, conversation, uh, but also dance and movement. Um, really the arts in general. And again, it, to me, it goes back to that <clears throat> deep engagement with humanity and, and the arts are what make us human. Um, and so she has been within this wider uh, arts community for, for decades. And, um, you know, her, while she ha has documented many um, performances, I don't, think of her, her, her work to me does not read as, you know, documentation or documentary photography. It reads as, uh, again, a conversation with uh, these other art forms and, and through that conversation, creating a new art piece. Um, so time, like we said, is like a huge theme in the exhibition. Um, it's like, are there any pieces that particularly stand out to you in the idea of like, time as like a motif of a, a idea you're trying to convey? Um, yeah, well, I will say the, the, the film that is, uh, that is in the show is a, a central um, component of this exhibition. So uh, this, will, this will be Ming's first uh, traveling museum exhibition. And uh, honestly, her, this is part of the conversation we've been having for the last few years that um, this is really her first opportunity to holistically um, represent her, her work, you know, while she's been creating incredible artwork for, for decades. Um, you know, this is the first time in, in a museum setting uh, she's been able to delve into all the various corners of her 
work. And so in the, the film installation, uh, it is stretching and expanding uh, her work from still photography to um, motion um, photography and, and also incorporating the sound and music directly within the piece. And in that piece, she collaborates with her son, Mingus Murray, um, who, who did the music, and he's a musician and, and did the music in the piece. And uh, it, it is about, um, it's about time, it's about uh, um, uh, both raising a black man in America and being a black man in America, this, co this collaboration of, of mother and son. Um, and uh, it uses uh, um, space and space travel as a, as a motif <laughs> uh, throughout the piece. And to me, it's both literally and figuratively kind of this conversation through time, um, uh, again, with, this be with it being uh, a collaboration with her, her son, who she's raised for several decades. <laughs> Um, so Ming Smith once said that through her work, she captures the wealth and beauty and power of black people that she has experienced in her lifetime. Is there a specific piece that springs to mind when you're considering this? Yes. Um, so the picture uh, in this exhibition of a roadside in Dakar, Senegal. Um, so several, several of the pieces, before I get to that one specifically, several of the pieces she's taken in her travels across, across the world. Um, and yet, in a similar way that she kind of blends time, she also blends space, um, uh, which also kind of goes back to the, the film and, and being in space. Um, but the way that, that she captures um, uh, African diaspora and uh, you know its people uh, is is unique in that the space and the place could be could be anywhere, right? You know, it could be in Africa, it could be in Chicago, it could be in New York, um, and there's always this um, regal nature, um, even in humble settings. Uh, and there always is a, a depth, um, whether it be through uh, mysteriousness of the form or the you know blur, the, the uh, mystery. Um, as a founding partner of Open Art, like what vision do you see for the art world, and how are you working towards that? Yeah, so I um, I am very interested in. Um, making the art world less opaque and more open. Um, I think that it scares a lot of people, unfortunately. Um, I think because um, often it's associated with ivory towers that only certain people are welcome in, um, only certain people are, you know, have access to. Um, and so I'm interested in education and, um, giving people the, uh, the confidence that they're welcome, that their uh, thoughts and feelings are valid. I often get you know, asked a, 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 like what a particular artwork means. You know, what, does it, you know, what does this mean um, without the person um, talking about what, it, what it's saying to them? Uh, because I, there's a bit of a fear around being wrong. But there really is no being wrong. Um, you, if, if the viewer doesn't get what the artist was intending, then the artist probably didn't do a very good job of it in the first place, and maybe it's not doing what the artist intended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so what do you hope that attendees will take away from this exhibition? Uh, so I, I hope that they um, have a, a deeper and better understanding of uh, Ming Smith, uh, the artist, um, her body of work, her, her breadth, and her importance um, in art history. I think that uh, I mean, it's beautiful that she is finally getting her due as um, 
an important artist of our time. Uh, and I'm excited that this exhibition is going to be traveling to multiple institutions. One last question. If you could have a conversation with your 17-year-old self, what would you tell him? Mm, it's all going to be OK. <laughs> yeah. Don't stress too much. <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you all. This is great. Appreciate it.